I purchased some wire connectors. They come in different shapes and different names. <clears throat> you could either call it a through connector, a wire connector, uh, a splicer. But I purchase these connectors. It's different to the others. For a project I would be working on. And I decide to just show the connectors and the other connectors that they have. <clears throat> the most common connector is this one. You put your wire here, you put the other end there, and you tighten it down. And it holds the wire. The other connectors are these. You put the two ends in and you screw them. But the problem with these, there are times when you try tightening the wire in it, <clears throat> they would come out. So you would have to tape it. But apart from that, they are good. But the connector I want to discuss today is this one. It has a lever like this. It's a through connector. Let me get my meter. It's continuous, it's for splicing wires. Although the colors are different, but you could choose. You see the continuity goes right through. It doesn't break. So if you have live here, you would have live on the other side. The same thing with this side. And uh, no continuity, vice versa. It just goes right through. The other thing is the size. You see, for this small one, you have you would have more space to work with. You would have more space to work with if you want to put it in a <clears throat> compartment. Although they have those with um, dim rail connectors on it, but with this one. When you use it, or if you're using it on a piece of wood, you could use screws to hold it down. This would be suspended by the, the wire. It's rated for 250 volts and uh, 32 amps.
Yeah, 32 arms. I do think you could. Sorry about that. I got a call. Huh? Um, where was I? Okay. To connect your wires, you lift this. The levers. Although I splice it already, but you would put this here. That's, that one is not long enough. You would put this here. Look inside it. And the splice it should be somewhere about here. your lever is up you push in as deep as you can make sure when you take out the coating that you have a good bit of shielding left you push it in and then you put the lever down and if you notice it's well clamped. You do the same thing to the other side. And you press. It's secured. Now if you test. I'll put this one on both ends of the wire. Now if I just take one, which is the blue end, the neutral, if I put it on the live side, nothing. Now if I take the live end, This is another way of uh, splicing. The only thing with that, it is a bit too long. It would take too much space if you're putting it into a cabinet. It would take too much space. But then it's secure because you see the, the distance of it with that. If another piece of wire touch anywhere here, it would be shorted. With these, when you put it in and you turn, that's not the right size of wire, it would be kind of secured. Now this would be from 28 to 12 gauge. That's the wires it would take in it. Uh, this is it for now. I will, or I should say, I can recommend this. But again, you have to be very careful dealing with electricity. If you're not sure or you're not confident have an electrician 
to do your splicing for you but you could use that on your power packs or 12 volts thing always rated also for ac but you could also use it on on dc a current this is it for now i'll put a link to this in the description if you purchase from my link i'll get a small commission at no extra cost to you that would help the channel go a long way i also have a link to paypal in the description if you would like to donate to my channel you can do so also it would also help with the purchasing of certain items so i can demonstrate them to you all thank you goodbye until the next one